So we hibernated whilst we were building Stick to Football, the main interviews, and we are resuming them again. And it's quite an exciting one. It's uh, with the Liverpool, do I call him right back? I don't think you can call him a right back because he's uh, no ordinary right back. Trent Alexander-Arnold, obviously one of the most talented well, one of the most talented defenders I think you'll see in the game. I can't make any higher compliment for him than saying this this is David Beckham, Kevin De Bruyne playing at fullback. Am I here? You don't see fullbacks playing football like you see him. Ever. I walked out at Old Trafford and it was the biggest it was I couldn't believe it. I genuinely couldn't obviously when we're coming out there's booze and that and I'm like, I've never experienced that because I haven't been booed before. But I was like, oh, I was like, it's never, end. it's, it's just, you know, it's like that. When we go to Anfield, it's exactly the opposite. There's no space there. There's no room there. Mm. You literally would take a touch and you just had to deliver it down the line or else you was getting absolutely smashed. Do you not, you don't have the same problem nah, as me, nah. do you? <laughs> no, no, but you know what I hate about United? When you come off the pitch and it slumps down. Oh, okay. Oh, that's dangerous, that. That's dangerous, that. <laughs> little nudge down Yeah, there. the nudges, <laughs> yeah. I always think when you're speaking to a current player, it's always a little bit more reserved, rightly so, because they're a current player who have obligations to the club. You know, I'm not looking for any glorified headline out of Trent Alexander-Arnold. I don't want one and he won't look to give me one. Uh, what I'm looking to talk to him about is the position, um, his challenges on and off the pitch, being at a big club, the demands of being an academy player at a big club. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, really looking forward to it. Do you play darts a lot? No. So this dart belt boat been just put up for us. <laughs> <laughs> has Jurgen Klopp got that sort of fear factor? Yeah, he has, has he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's been times when I've needed a ball of food, and there's times when like I've not needed it, and I've kind of needed a little bit of love and guidance, and, he, and he's been there for me. He wants us to be the hardest team to beat. That every team fears, thinking to beat this team, it, we have to do something very special. You're going to be sat on the edge of your own box, yeah, low block, low, yeah, really. <laughs> playing like me. <laughs> Talk to me about Jurgen Klopp and the influence as a, as a sort of mentor, coach, boss that he's had on you. Incredible, really. I think I, I owe everything to him, really, from a, um, as, a, as a player. I think, you know, I was thinking about this recently, the, the only thing you can ever ask for as a young player is opportunity. Yeah. What you can do is just hope that when you get to 18, 19, you've got a manager that's willing to give you a chance. And I was fortunate enough to have that. And not only that, he, was, he put his arm around me and guided me through it, through the ups and downs, the winning of stuff, um, losing losing things, good games, bad games. Cause you, your first bad game is you think you're never going to kick a ball again. <laughs> you know, you think I'm done. Um, does he shout at you, at the players? Does he shout at you when you're a young player? Does he, has he had the have had a bollocking at half time? Mm. Yeah. He, he, no. The, the, the good thing is he 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 knows when a bollocking's needed and when a little bit of love's needed. Yeah. And I think that's very important um, to be able to see who needs it and when they need it. But yeah, there's been times when I've needed a bollocking, um, and there's times when like I've not needed it. I've kind of needed a little bit of love and guidance, yeah. and he and he's been there for me. And he's someone that I can go into his office and even if it's not football related, yeah. go and speak to him and, and vent and get off my chest. He's always there, always encourages the lads to go into his office um, and speak and give them answers and, and be honest about, about decisions, really. So that's all you want as well. Yeah. You, if you're going to go and ask questions, you need a gaffer who's going to be honest. Yeah. Is it, I mean, I, I had a manager that was a massive respect for, like, huge mentor, but... You would, you could go and knock on his door. You could go, but you would do that as a last resort because you just, you know, there was still that element of almost like, almost like your dad when you're younger, a bit of fear factor. Yeah. Has yeah. Jurgen Klopp got that sort of fear factor? Yeah, he has, has yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. It's not. It's not like a fear. Is he like he's scared to yeah. be around them? It's just like presence. And, yeah, he's yeah. got that presence and that like aura about him yeah. that is one of, if not the best manager on the planet, and he's shown that so. When you're a young player or even come first into the team, you kind of on your toes around. I'm thinking, how's he reacting? This, that, and the other. How can I get in his good books and that? And um, yeah, I'm just yeah, oh, everything to him really. To be honest, what was it like that morning when he came in and said, "I want to sit down with you all"? 
weird because we never have a meeting at that time. <laughs> never. So it was, it what was time weird. was the meeting? Normally, we normally get in for like 10, half 10, yeah. and then we'll have a meeting at like 12 just before we go to train. Yeah. Um, and then when we get in, he, we have a meeting at half 10. And the first time, it's the first time I've ever had a meeting at half 10. He's like, everyone in the changes. So everyone's in there, and then he's just stood there. And then, like, you can just see the lads all looking around, like, what's, what's going on? And then he just said, look, it's... I just wanted to let you know it's breaking now, so it broke at the same yeah. time. Um, and like just kind of done, like, not done, done, but um, I can tell it. I'm, this is it, really. Yeah. He he kind of knew that. I think another season would be too much, but he has enough in the tank to get us to the to the end of the season. And that's something he always ta always taught us, and that's something that I've adopted as a player. And I was, you take it season by season, um, no matter what what goes on, no matter what situation you're in or whatever. No point stressing about the next season because yeah. that's completely different. You focus on the season, you focus, you put everything yeah. into it and then the next season you go and try and do it again. But up until then, you squeeze every last drop out of out of it. And that's, again, probably something that, there's so many lessons he's taught me, but yeah. that's probably one of the biggest ones is he doesn't want us, he, time, like he'll say to us, he doesn't want us to be the best team in the world, doesn't want us to play the best football in the world. He wants us to be the hardest team to beat. That Every team fears thinking to beat this team, it, yeah. we have to do something very special. And not even like a footballing sense, but how much we want to win. Yeah. Um, is something, the mentality he's, he's instilled in us. Even now, the young players that come through, you can see it within two, three sessions of just being around them. And we're used to it because we get the same message. I've had the same messages kind of every day for seven years yeah. now. So I'm kind of immune to it. And it's just built in built yeah. in that I do. I have that mentality and I got and I, and I do things that, that way. And seeing new players coming in and young players coming through, you can see within two, three days how did it, like the intensity levels, the aggression levels, the desire just... The, is, impact, is the impact on them straight away, and like the intensity in them is just like running around like dogs, just trying trying to win the ball off anyone, not scared of anyone, tackling whoever they want and putting a foot in and that. You probably not even had time to think about sort of like what next season looks like because you've you've got so much to think about this season. But does it scare you a little bit the idea of a new voice, one that you've not heard before? I'd probably say I'm like I sat on the fence on it because I think. It'll be a completely different situation, yeah. and it's like it's gonna be weird to then to turn up to preseason or whatever and have to adopt new yeah. playing style. Yeah. Whereas, without anything getting said to me, I, I know how the manager wants me to play. Yeah. And I'm not, I turn up first day preseason. I know yeah. I'm to jump there. I'm to press. I'm to do this. Now it's like. My, my next preseason is going to be a completely different message, and you're going to be sat on the edge of your own box, yeah, low block, low, yeah, really <laughs> playing like me. <laughs> <laughs> low block, don't go past the halfway line. <laughs> um, nah, so it's 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 going to be it's going to be strange, but I think I like the the idea of it's a new it'll be a new challenge for the yeah. for the team for the club. Um, for the players. Do you think it's partly on you to make this transition work as much as it is for a new manager? Because it's going to be tough for a new manager to come in and replace that giant of a figure that's been there, isn't it? I think um, the way I look at it is, of course, the manager's going to come in and change the way you play and will it'll be a different kind of culture and yeah. different different messages, but as players, that the, the mentality to win and... The eagerness to win and not the pressure but kind of yeah the internal pressure yeah. within on ourselves and the demand to, yeah. to to win things and to to be in a title race next season no matter yeah. who who the manager yeah. is that's is that, what we expect from ourselves yeah. um of course the results might not go our way or whatever but as long as that mentality is there it, it, not that it doesn't matter who the manager is but as long as the dressing room is has got that desire that we're going to win, yeah. we're trying to win things. It's not a transition season. The manager comes in and within his style of play is that winning mentality, yeah. then that's how the transition needs yeah. to happen. You're in the three-horse title race <laughs> with City and Arsenal. I'm not going to ask you about the other two teams because they'll do what they'll do, but what gives you confidence that Liverpool can be 
the title win at the end of the season just because you've been you've been round you've been on this journey before. I think experience is a, is a massive part of it. And I think obviously the other two teams will have experience from last season yeah. with, the, with the, they had their, their own title race within themselves. Does the manager leaving and the passion and the emotion around Liverpool and what it's going to be like, does that give you that edge, do you think? I think he will feed into that the further it goes. Like, let's say we get into May, the start of May, and it's still that tight, then he'll start to feed into how yeah. it's going to how it could look, how it could feel. Up until, up until then, it's like we just need to try and stay. Yeah. He never says we'll, we're trying to win the league. We're going to win the league. No, he doesn't say those no, targets, dude, no, no. He doesn't, doesn't speak about. Doesn't really speak about it. It's more we're going to get the most out of ourselves. We're going to squeeze every drop yeah. of potential. There will, there will be twists and turns yeah. no matter what. I'm sure all three teams will try and win, and we'll come close to kind of winning every single game they play. Now there will be twists and turns, and we just hope that we're in the, in, in, in the best position. No, I mean, you winning the Champions League was oh. the best moment. <laughs> Is there a competition between you both? There was, there was. We haven't, we haven't done it in years now. I've just recognised, I think I'd be brilliant for Jurgen Klopp, because I could definitely go into midfield and give it away for him. <laughs> right, we've got this little game. Mm -hmm. So you're going to throw yeah. a dart at the board if it's a... Odd number, you get a football question. If it's a even number, you get non-football question. Okay. If you didn't make it as a football player, what would you have been? I'm very interested in like the mental side of things, so I would say like sports psychology. Good. Oh, here we go. One more. You got Ailes. Thirteen. You want your football oh, yeah, questions, do you don't you? Question. The best moment you've ever had in your career. It's a simple one. Uh, winning Champions League. Wasn't my best moment. No, what was yours? No, I mean, you winning the Champions League was oh. the best moment. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, next one. Biggest phobia? What are you scared of? Cats, me. Cats? Yeah. You got pets. I have a no dog. dog. I have a dog, but cats are just a different kind of. <laughs> we'll move on, we'll not offend the cat lovers. Yeah. Right, 17, odd. Best friend in football? I would say club. Robbo, internationals, probably Jude. He's going to be unbelievable, Andy Robertson, aren't he? Oh. oh my God. Is there a competition between you both on assists and... There was, there was. <laughs> we, we, haven't, we haven't done it in years now, but there was for about two or three years. Uh, still unbeaten, in it? <laughs> still unbeaten, in it? Um, but I always say it's about the quality of the assist as well. He, 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 he can pass to someone here, yeah. you'll turn with one top bin or take on four players, yeah. score, and he'll claim the assist. It's honestly... <laughs> Whereas I'll play a 60 yard pass, get the assist, and it'll be like, yeah, that's a proper assist. <laughs> You'll play a little short pass. So the quality of your assist is a lot better. Uh, yeah, it's all quality, <laughs> not quality. Right, next one. 12. Three dream guests to have round for dinner. Say. Stevie G, Zidane, and probably Ronaldo, I would say. Cristiano. Yeah, loves to pick his bread. I just love As you can oh. tell, I just like to I love putting <laughs> Can't stop. Next start, we're on again. Two. If you could time travel, which football era do you want to play in? Late 2000s, I would say. Late I like Yeah, I love that era. Like Rooney, Ronaldo, Tevez, you had Lampard, Drogba. Yeah. You had like Fabregas with Van Persie, you had Gerard Torres. Yeah. Like each team had their super, like yeah, yeah. that was just incredible. And then I love like probably the nine to eleven Barca team. I, yeah. I would have loved to have. Felt, uh, <laughs> we, we didn't love it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you guys. We us up. Yeah, but I think like that yeah. that era was that's the one that I grew up watching. Yeah. And like that, I was like ten to fifteen at that at that time, and I was like, that's what really dragged me into football, football man. Yeah. What would yours be? Um, I, thought, I always think now, in some ways, I'm mean, tra tra travelling, I travel forward. I, I just, because every team when I watch the fullbacks, it started to mesmerise me and think, what, how would I have even survived? No, I, I, I say this, how would, have I, how would I have even survived today? Not just watching you, forget you, you're a freak with the way you pass the ball, but like watching Porro at Spurs go into midfield yeah. and doing what he does, yeah. and a doggy, and watch, I, I, you know, you see obviously what. You know, Stones is doing it at the moment. City playing in midfield, and Kyle's having to tuck in, but then get back out again. My job was really simple. If 
My left back went forward. I'm tucking round. Yeah. If I go forward, he's tucking round. If it's on my side, I'm going out there and, and getting. To, it just you know quite simple. The ball comes into me. I've got a pass there to my right winger. I've got a pass into my striker. I've got a pass to my central midfield player. And I've got a pass to my centre back. And that's what I'm doing. I'm serving yeah, 50, yeah. 15 yards. I might hit a ball into my striker. That's my game. My game's quite sort of methodical. And what you're being asked to do now on the ball and the positions you've been asked to take up, it's like degrees of difficulty are like here compared to the degrees of difficulty of what, how I was asked to play the game. So I would think, I'd love to just be here now. Yeah, just to see what it was You'd like. You'd like to see me here now, I'd love to see yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I think everyone would like to see you. <laughs> <laughs> so you go, you won't be gobbing off anymore. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm seeing, every think, right back wishes you were playing yeah, right now. Because <laughs> if I look at you, I think, what, I, I can't even relate to it, the game, what you've been asked to do. Mm. How do you know when to be in there? Do you, when, you're, when you're going forward as a team, you're sometimes coming into that right central mm. midfield. When do you, do you make that decision? when to be there or when to be out wide to be able to go. How's that? Is that just a feeling or an instinct or is it something that's like a design? Both, really. So I think the, the outline of it is like we work on it, like yeah. the shell. Yeah. It's then within that you have freedom. So it's like, okay, so we're always going to have four in the middle of the pitch yeah. at any given time. Whether so you always have to have four in there. Whether it's the, yeah. the, the midfield three and, and the nine comes in and yeah. makes that four or... A, a, a fullback comes in and makes that four. Yeah. We're always going to have that, and then it's identifying where and when that is. Yeah. Maybe maybe when the centre mids will drop back into the back three, back yeah. into the into the back line. That means people have got to get in there. To get. There. And then it and then does that. It doesn't matter who it is. So it's actually and then it's just the like field. See, yeah, it's just like seeing it yeah. and then going okay, well he's gone there, so I need to go there. And it's not relating to say Mo's position. Well, Mo comes into it at a point where. If it's switching out, we need someone that's always wide. Yeah. So sometimes I might be wide, Mo will be inside. So like Mo's inside, striker. you might go there. Yeah. Or yeah. it might be the 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 right the right midfielder yeah. that goes out there. It might be Harvey or yeah. Dom who goes out there, and then I come in and do their job yeah. in there. It just it does it. It's just really flexible. And, and the four that go in there, that's obviously to keep possession of the ball. Was that also to prevent counter attack going back the yeah. other way? Yeah. So it's kind of like the well, our whole game is based on counter press. Yeah. So. The, the, like the way that we get told to play is it's good up there to risk the ball because yeah. at times not that we're, we're told to, to lose it yeah. but it's not a bad thing to lose it because yeah. they then open their shape up yeah. they start to think let's counter attack we and win it back quick back and then that's yeah. when we kill them so yeah. it might not always be like the Man City way where the tiki taka yeah. and they break you down yeah. that's, not, that's not no one can really do it like them yeah. ours is more we'll try I'll, I'll probably risk it, might yeah. lose it, but they'll then expand trying, yeah. to, trying to get at us. Our six wins it back and then yeah. it, we're on a 5v5 yeah. at the back and yeah. then we're, we're gone. I've just recognised, I think I'd be brilliant for Jurgen Klopp because I could definitely go into midfield and give it away for him. <laughs> <laughs> I could definitely go into midfield, give it away and then you're all counter-pressing. It'd be amazing, it, that. It, it, the, the messaging is, at first, at first you, you would find it very strange because the messaging is he doesn't care who goes. Yeah. Does it doesn't care? I can go and press the center. Like if we yeah. lose it, you just jump. You go. Yeah, yeah. It does. It does not yeah, matter. Yeah. That's the way you play. It does. It, like yeah. you don't think about your position at that point. The it's, the pe it's the people behind yeah. you that they've got, that adjust, they've got they? to adjust. Yeah. And it's like probably the two sixes that. Okay. Well, he's gone there. Yeah. He's got like so. I'll say I've gone. So Trent's gone. So it's either Endo yeah. or Ibu or Kwanzaa, whoever's yeah. kind of on that right side yeah, yeah. to then fill in. Yeah. If my winger's I, cheating a little bit, I, I've seen you. I've seen you with a, with your strut with your winger, and you've jumped past your winger, mm -hmm. and I'm watching, thinking, where the fuck is he going? He's jumped. Yeah. And I'm thinking, has he been told to jump there, yeah, yeah. or has he just basically sort of felt that there's a jump on, and it'll get played over you the odd time, and you, you know, it's, it, it, I, we were never told to jump. If, really? if, you've, if, you've, if you've got a winger here, that's your man, and there's a man in there, that is the least sort of danger. The idea of jumping there and let's say he flicks it on past you or he just nips it around the corner. No, I, I would never come out of my hole. It's just a completely different yeah. way of thinking. I mean, I'm, it's unbelievable. And, and I recognise that in the last couple of years that you obviously have been told yeah, to, yeah. to jump past your wing. I mean, it's obvious sometimes and then obviously Canati will come across yeah, yeah. or Matip will come across. So, yeah, so our, our messaging is we, you play against the ball, not the man. Yeah. So wherever the ball is, so... 
let's say a goal kick or their centre back's got the ball, I should be in between the winger and the full back. Yeah. And the centre back should be in between the striker and the winger. Yeah. So if it goes over me, I can get back, back in. Yeah, yeah. If it goes there, yeah. I'm gone yeah. and everyone's around. Yeah. Like the back four should be on like a rope. Yeah, yeah. He goes. Yeah. Like like you said, when when your full back, the other full back went forward, yeah. you're back into it. Yeah. It's that, but just probably a bit more aggressive. Yeah. But you you struggle at first with the inter- oh my. Yeah. Is it like every the day? First, oh, the first like probably two three months of it is or pre season especially yeah. is. I you've never seen anything like it. Is he just like a sort of animal like all around the pitch? It's you just like it does it. It's just like you ha- you can't stop running. It's not like in a in a in a bad. No. Bad like punishment kind yeah. of way. It's not. It's not that. It's like this is the way you play, and it's you, we're gonna beat them yeah. because they're gonna get tired and we're not. And your line is like that. Yeah. High. It's like I mean, it makes me like, sort of wince a little bit. I'm thinking, what the spacing behind is unbelievable. But to be fair, your goalkeeper does. Yeah, a good it job, is. But it, but it, like the messaging is, we our backline has to be high because we need to make the pitch small because we're, we're pressing them as yeah. much as we can. If we stay back, then the gaps are big. Yeah, yeah. So, and, you're there. and then also, yeah. flip it, we can't we can't be high if you're not pressing. Yeah, yeah. So if, you, if centre-back's got the ball and we've got time, we're high, then that's, that's just a stupid line. Yeah. If we're high but he's got pressure and he yeah. doesn't know where to go, it's, we it's need to be there. Like, yeah. yeah, so it's... Right. Next one. I don't even know what, what, what I don't even know what the question was. <laughs> it's a good question though. <laughs> good answer. Yeah, I don't know what question that was. We're just talking about fullback <laughs> right, right back. It's just it's it's, it's brilliant. This. Uh, was that your low point then last year? Would you say in your career? I've learned a lot from it, which is which is good, and I think that's helped me this season especially. What you're doing is the hard bit. <laughs> and there's so much more I can go and achieve. I used to play when I was younger. I don't play much anymore. Oh, doing very well there, am I? From what I, what I see is, when Rooney came in, he was like, it looked like he was a man, he was yeah. every, and then Ronaldo's come in, and he was probably a little bit more frustrating, a little bit more needed to learn, and wasn't yeah. the finished article. At what point did like them scales then change, and Ronaldo was the real deal, and the best player in the world? I think you're right. Um, Rooney was almost like a man straight away mm. from 2000. What would it have been? 2004 when he broke it. 2002, 3, 4 when he broke in. And we broke into the England team at sort of like 18. He was like the best player in the team straight away. He was unbelievable. He, like his decision making, his power, his strength. Ronaldo came and he was like that, quite scrawny, not developed his body. His decision making was erratic. He would, you know, if he should have crossed it. He dribbled, if he should have dribbled, he crossed it. He always, to be fair, frustrated the players in the middle because he'd go to cross it and they'd make the run and then he'd turn yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you get down that line yeah. and just put it in. He would never, he was all over the place like that. And I actually lost faith with him. Because not just that, he wasn't he wasn't delivering them in an attacking sense, but he actually he, he did, didn't run back that much. So he wasn't really helping his Bex when I played there before, I was always running back and doubling up. Mm. So we always had, I always had help. Yeah. So it was quite frustrating, and then I think it was around 2006 he scored, that's when they knocked us out of the World Cup in Germany, and he scored the penalty, and he came back, and all of a sudden his physique, his body had changed, and that season, 2006, when we first won the league, and we won the league for three years because of Mourinho and Wenger, and he was that season, just a transformation into this absolute machine, strong, I think he scored 35, 40 goals, was it kept at that level? Where they were both at that level, probably 2006 to 2009 when he left, that was the best United team I've ever seen. Because you had Rooney, Ronaldo, Tevez up front, mm. and you had those Giggs, Scholes, Carrick, it was unbelievable. And the movement, the speed, the power was, was frightening. But the, then sort of Cristiano went to Madrid, carried on going that way, and Waza started to sort of. Waza's career at 27, he played for like 10, 11 years already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they both sort of like, you know, Wayne was always going to have a shorter career. But when they were both together 2006 to 9, they were brilliant. And then after that, Cristiano started to go like that. Um, but Could he, you tell that was going to happen? The body shapes were different. I say that respectfully in mm. terms of sort of Wazza's that sort of square, sort of strong shape. Because Cristiano had this like physique, like a super middleweight boxer. And he was in the gym every day for an hour before doing his pre-activation. Even back then when it was like, it wasn't really the thing as much. And he'd stay after and do all the sort of the ice baths. The, he had all the stuff in his house. 
robotics too strong, but he never took a chance with his professionalism at all. Which, to be fair, was, you know, if you ask him, he did, yeah. you know, he liked to drink, he liked to go out a little bit, and his body shape was different, but they were both unbelievable players, but Cristiano just went on, and he's still going now. You see, you know, I mean, it's unbelievable. Yeah, it really. But your body shape similar to Cristiano's, I would say, in the sense of when he first came in. I mean, you've also you get you get yeah, stronger. Yeah. He's got stronger. People now see you as a midfield player, it's just the way you play and where you end up with Liverpool. Do you see yourself as a midfield player, or do you still see yourself? No, I'm a right back. Um, I probably still see myself as a right back. I see myself who can probably play in both positions yeah. if needed. Needed. Um, but I think my focus is until I'm told otherwise. But I. By the gaffer, then I'm I'm still right back. I come inside and I play inside yeah. when we got the ball. But you no, know, essentially I'm on the, when you're writing the team sheet, I'm I'm, I'm yeah. right back. You're by far. I, I put you in the same category as Kevin De Bruyne and David Beckham in terms of use of the ball. I've never seen anything like it. I don't know how you do it. Thank you. I have no idea how you deliver the ball. How you do from deep, from high up the pitch when you're in midfield, the passes you play, and then. I've always asked that little bit more from your defensive. You know that, and mm -hmm. I've, I've said that to you, and you know, and I've spoken to you. Something's changed. It's felt like in the last six months. Have you made? Is there something changed in your mind about? Because to me, the right back, defending right, is the easiest bit. What you're doing is the hard <laughs> bit. Um, no, everyone, everyone always says that to me. You know, um, that the, the it's harder. The stuff that I'm good at, and the stuff that I excel at, like the passing, the vision, everything like that. Um, that's the hard part, that's the things that people can't pick up, it's th that you can't learn, it's just instinctive. Um, but I think I definitely over the last, I think, like I said, in the summer, I had a, because of, I think last season was a season I thought to myself, I, I'm not going through that again, and I feel like I, can, I, I should be able to control whether I have a good season, I'm happy with our play, regardless of what people say. Yeah. You know, people might say I have a bad game, there's times I'll come home and I'll think, you know what, I felt like I'd done my job, I'd done what I was asked, yeah. okay, I maybe never got assists or whatever, but solid defensively, done this, that and the other, but people won't, won't talk about that, but so I thought as long as I, I, I can say in myself that the season's gone well, um, and I just, I just thought, I don't want to waste another, another season. Were you suffering last season? What, do you th what, what, what was in your mind last season? I think it was just, I think, as, as a player, as a team, um, as a whole, we kind of went through a, a rough, a rough season. And yeah. when people have such high expectations of you individually and as a, yeah. as a team, it's hard to then keep living up to them, and it's the hardest demand ever. Um, which is why I, I have so much respect for you and, and your, like you and your team in that era, and how to con continuously keep winning and finding it. And it's the, it's the hardest I've found that it's the hardest yeah. thing to do in football is to be consistent. We had bad seasons as well, though. You know, we had seasons where we dropped to like, you know, well below our standard. You just don't remember them sometimes yeah, yeah, yeah. at the end. Yeah, but I, I, I thought I, I just, I just felt at the end of the season. I just, I just thought I've learned a lot from it, which is, which is yeah. good, and I think that's helped me this season especially. Um, but I just, I just thought I'm not going through through that again last season. I just didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to feel the way I felt at times and. Um, likewise, as, as a team, I want to. I want to be. I've said it before. I want to be winning minimum yeah. once, one one trophy a season. What you like when you come home when, it do, when it's not going well when you feel like how, how do you carry football home with you? Are you able to switch off or are you somebody that when you have a game or a difficult moment you carry it with you and you like it, you know a little bit down? Both, I would say a little both. bit of both. Yeah, I think I respect the way I feel um, and I embrace it for however long it needs it needs to take. Yeah. The, the more of a run that you're in, yeah. the longer them. You know, you have what you you're in good form. You have one bad game. You don't yeah. even really think about it. It's like, oh, it's a bad game. Let me get back back, back to yeah, it. You know, four, five, six games where you haven't really had a, had a good game. Yeah. Um, it lasts a lot longer. Um, but I'm someone who just I, I try as much, as best as I can to just keep a flat baseline. Yeah. And whether good, bad, in between, is don't get ahead of yourself. And you know, I've always believed in in keeping level headed. You know, my family and my friends around me as well will. No, will keep me on, keep me feet on the floor. Did, was that your low point then last year? Would you say in your career? I would say so. Yeah, I would say so. Because I think from from the start, it was kind of up. Well, from the start, getting into the team, then all of a sudden the next season I'm Champions League final, yeah. going to a World Cup in my first full proper season yeah. as a first team player. 
and then the next season winning the Champions League, then yeah. the next season winning the... And it was just every season was Constant just... Up, yeah. And it was... I, was, I always thought that there would, there would come at that, that point. And yeah. A bit like you like you feel it in the academies and whatever, and even, you know, like I said, so many good games will go like that, and then it'll, this, that, and the other. Um, so I, I was expecting it to come at some point. Um, I think it came at the right time. I think if it came too early in my career, yeah, it would it then it then yeah. it then your confidence it, yeah. and you, and you start to question yourself. Whereas you know that that wasn't the, that wasn't the point. I'd, I understood what I'd achieved so far, and I'm so proud of myself and how much work I put in. But also understanding how much I'm not even hopefully not even halfway through my career, yeah. and there's so much more I can go and achieve, and figuring that out, figuring out what it is that I want to go and go and do and want to achieve, and challenge myself, push myself to the limits, and have that demand on, yeah. on yourself to, to have to perform week in, week out. What did you do in the summer that made you feel like, right, OK, I'm not going to do it again, but did you, what did you do that means that you feel now? Obviously, this season, I've noticed a big, you know, the, the, your mentality at the start of the season, your performance levels have always been high, but this season, I just felt there was the determination in you that was sort of like, oh, this is a different level, this, mm -hmm. you know, to the point where, by up until your injury, you're probably talking about being one player of the season in the mm -hmm. whole league, let alone just as a defender. I think... I felt like a big sense of responsibility on myself. Until up until now, I kind of just gone with the flow, kind of just every like I said, everything been going upwards yeah. and upwards and upwards, and naturally it just keeps getting better. And you don't have to think about things too much. You just enjoying your footy, not yeah. thinking about it, and it, and everything just keeps happening. And then just going with the flow almost a little. Yeah, bit. and then it gets to a point when that flow kind of starts bringing you down. And then I'm thinking, okay, well I need to take responsibility to make sure this doesn't keep going down, and it and it. It halts there, and to, to, to be fair, the back end of last season, I really got a big, um, a, a good run of games, yeah. good, good, good run of form. Had the summer with, with England, uh, which kind of revitalised me as well, gave me that fresh new hope of finding a place in the England team. Um, and some really good chats with the, with the manager. And then, yeah, so I just felt a lot of responsibility, like, it's, it's on you, it's, it's my career. Yeah. What, you can't just kind of let it just pass you by, and if it's good, it's good. If it's bad, it's bad. It's like yeah. you you need to try and get a grip of it and yeah. get the power of whether it is good or whether it is bad, and force it in that direction. So, and then just just having a demand on myself. I think the responsibility of of and now being club vice captain yeah. really coming to it as well. Start get, getting put into that role means you need to you need to step up. You need to you need to perform. People are looking up to you. Um, and you need to be a role model. You need to be someone in the in the changing room, in and around it. That's driving standards. Um, and I just felt responsible f for that, and I, l I like it. I love yeah. the responsibility, and I crave it really. Did you speak to anybody else that helped you? I mean, obviously your manager maybe or coaches, but was there anybody? Did you see a psychologist? Did you see anybody that you sort of like, you know, go and confide in, or just do it all mainly yourself and through your coaching staff? A lot of it was just. Yeah, through with, with with the manager, with the coaching staff, with my family, um, they helped me through it as well. No, it wasn't like I was in a really dark, no. dark place. It wasn't. It was like, no, like, just performance level. Yeah, it's just yeah, yeah, it's just like you're just not happy with the how yeah. you're playing, and when it's when that's the biggest thing in your life, yeah. it is. It does get it does get on top of you. Um, and you're a local lad, and you feel it. And yeah. You feel it more when you're local. Mm. I mean, obviously, the, the players that come to the club, the big club like Liverpool, they feel it as well. But when you're local, you feel it more. I think. Yeah, one hundred percent. Because it's like you're engulfed in it. You, yeah. you, you know, it feels like you're in the centre, and everything's like surrounding you. And it's yeah. not that it gets on top of you, but it's it's an it's an intense thing, and it's something that that you know I'm sure you felt the same. You love yeah. it because it makes you feel even more special when things are going well. Um, but you also got the sense of you're letting everyone down when you're not performing, um, mm -hmm. which is difficult. Um, but I think I think it's good for players. To, not, it's not good for players to go through it, but it's important because, like you said, once you come out of it, I feel now whatever I go through now between now and the end of my career, I'll be able to to handle it, um, whether good or bad. I'll, I'll have the right mentality towards it. I still remember to the day the first time I seen my name on the back of someone's shirt. My group that I came through with, no one really made it. It was kind of just me. You know what I've always wanted to ask you? Oh, here we uh, go. So talk to us about Liverpool in terms of sort of the city. Talk to us a little bit about your charity as well. Um, the city? Um, Intense? Yeah. 
in a in a good way, in like yeah. a loving, wholesome, like yeah. you can see, like just by people looking at you, you're changing like someone's life. Yeah. Really, is it's incredible. Um, I still remember to the day the first time I seen my name on the back of someone's shirt in the city centre. I was about eighteen. Um, just couldn't believe it. Could not believe it. Um, and then now it's just above and beyond. Now it's incredible. And the charity work that you're doing. Yeah, so charity cool. is um, the After Academy. It's basically set up for kids who get released at 16, 17, 18, 19 onwards. Who, you from know, Liverpool's Academy? No, just from any academy. Any, any academy. Um, and it's there to kind of support them in what yeah. way, give them apprenticeships, give them, you know, placements where they can go and work experience for a year or so and yeah. get what they need to get and, and hopefully then you know, find something else. Because I, I don't know what it was like for you, but when I was in the academy, the only thing was you're either a footballer and if that doesn't work, you, you're a coach. Yeah. You go and get your badges. They were the only kind of things. And I think you now, like to yourself yeah. and the, the media side of it, there's so many more opportunities to go and, and be a part of football that isn't just being a, a player or a coach. And there's so many different avenues that are out there that, we're just not taught about no. in the academy. It, it's interesting you say that because it's obvious that like the players that sort of get released at 18, their dreams are just completely shattered. But when I was, probably after I was 23, 24, I became PFA union rep. So every year yeah, I had yeah, to yeah. go in with the young players to see the manager, which when he was releasing them as young mm -hmm. pros or appre apprentices and sit there and listen to the manager tell them that they wouldn't be there anymore. And obviously sometimes they get other clubs, wouldn't they? But some, imagine if they don't yeah, get another yeah, yeah. club. It's the ones that don't really, um, exactly don't really know where to go or what to do. And what are you just thinking that for? Do you, I mean, obviously, do you just feel the privilege and honour of doing what you're doing? But you just is it someone that sort of it you looked was, at that that you thought someone you played with or someone that you were young? A lot really, because my group that I came through with, no one really made it. It was kind of just me, and right. I was like, we all sacrificed so much and. I sacrificed the exact same as 10, 15 other lads my age, let alone lads above and below me. But they got rejected. But they got rejected. And like, mine's worth it. I, I sit back now and think, like, I'd do it all again because yeah. I'm reaping the reward from it. But them lads, they're not kind of getting the reward from it. And it's like, okay, well, I've wasted all them years. Yeah. And I've got nothing to show for it. Yeah, I was part of the Liverpool Academy, but what's that yeah. going to do for me now? Yeah. Can't go and say, can I have a job because yeah. I was there. You know, yeah. so it's kind of giving them a chance to to, do, to to make something of themselves. Right, well, look, I've absolutely loved speaking to you today. It's been amazing. And have I missed anything out, by the way? I now, you, know what I, you know what I've always wanted to ask you? <laughs> Here uh, we go. No, 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 this is like, this is, <laughs> what was it like when, when Phil left United? Josh, it's interesting that everyone else was relieved. <laughs> 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 no, just something, I always remember it was like when Bex left, Butty left and Phil left. And it was bad each time because we had literally been together for 10 years. But I went round to the boss's house with Phil to see him on, I think it was a Sunday night. You gig into everyone's meetings, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you want me to come and see Jür Jürgen or Gareth with you, I'll sort it out for you, don't worry. I can, I can, I can talk a good game. <laughs> Get into everyone's meetings, it's a good way of putting it. No, I was asked to come along. <laughs> and Phil was just like dreading this meeting with the manager. I just said, look, you know... I'll, I'll, so I, what was it, was it? I rang the boss up and said, look, can me and Phil... Did he want to go or did the club want to go? He wanted to go. So Phil was in a role where, but I'm trying to think like... A, he was playing 25, 30 games a season, but when the big... It, no matter how well he played, he felt, when the big game came along, he might miss out and like someone would come back in. And he felt like he wasn't going to be sort of like... Mm. Number, and and he'd, he'd done that for like seven or eight years, he felt. And in the end, he just said, no, I want to be number one. I want to play. I want to play every single week. After sort of when he, and, and David Moyes had um, had come in for him. And he just said... And the, the manager said, no, I want you to stay. I want you to carry on doing what you're doing. And, and he just said to the boss, no, and, and I said, well, Phil said it. Um, I just need to play every week, boss. I need to feel like I'm you know, on the team sheet. Um, and I respected it. Um, but I didn't. I didn't like it. I I, I, wanted, I, wanted, I wanted us to all stay together. Um, like when Nicky left, he was on pre-season tour, and he felt exactly the same way. Newcastle came in for him, and he went home from pre-season tour, and it felt like it felt like someone had sort of like passed. You know what I mean? It was like it was horrible. Like the buddy left our tour. We were in pre-season in America, and it's horrible. I mean, have you had that feeling when someone that you've 
I mean, that would be Jordan maybe left or. Yeah, probably probably Hendo because that was that was a surprise. Obviously, coming back from pre-season, then it's just like, yeah, it's I'm gone. Starts getting into talks, and that, it's a bit different now because it's like it's all over Twitter. Just, it's yeah, all yeah. over. Yeah, just Sky if it's kept quiet, is it? Yeah, no. it's like you know, like a move yeah. kind of happening yeah. before it even starts. No, it was tough. It was tough because you think you're going to be together forever. You've been together. I think we'd won. I think we won six titles together, all of us, like up to a 25, 26. And then, like, them three left within three or four years. And then me, Giggsy and Scalzi stayed. I stayed till I was 36. Scalzi till he was 38 and Giggsy till he was 40. So they stayed for a couple of years after me. Um, but, yeah, it, it, was, it wasn't great when they left. What, what, what part of the game do you f- love most? Game day. I think the whole... Game day, it's like that. These times now, yeah, you miss that bit. It's just like, <sighs> but you know that that to me is the difference between you and me. I would, not panic's not the right word. I wouldn't panic about game day. It's overthinking. Yeah, and it was like because for me as a right back, was I going to win my team the game? Mm. Nah, very rare. You like, can only you know, lose. Scored seven really. goals in six. I can only actually lose my team the game, you know what I mean? That's my mentality. So I played 600 games for United, <laughs> thinking that actually most weeks, the likelihood is that I'm not going to win my team the game. No one's going to say Gary Neville was the best player on the pitch day if we win. But if I give a goal away, that's, that was my mentality. I played my whole career like that. Whereas you play your career with the freedom of thinking, yeah. I'm going to influence this game in a positive way because of the way you play. Yeah. And that's a complete different... Rooney was like that. I always remember game day, quarter-final, 2004, first tournament. I went, are you all right? Thinking that he'd be a little bit... He went, I can't wait for tonight. And I'm like, OK, I'm glad someone can. <laughs> you know? I played against Ronaldo and Figo. Because wow. they were swapping wings. They played for... Ronaldo and Figo played for Portugal and they were swapping wings. And I knew I was having one of them. Cristiano, to be fair, went against Ash at left-back and I had Figo. Um, Did you, do you find that difficult? Like, if you put, come against a teammate on an international yeah. level? Yeah, I played against Cristiano a couple of times where he came over to my side. It'd be tough. I don't think he enjoyed it either, though. I don't think he enjoyed it. <laughs> 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 He's rubbing his hands, really. <laughs> no, but at the time, he was quite young and I was yeah, quite yeah. experienced and I wasn't phased by him at that time because I played against him every day. I would say this, the best players I played against were in training. Giggs, Ronaldo, Rooney. I was playing against them every mm. day. So I, was, I felt like I felt like that. Like when I first came, when I first came in, I was against Sadio and Coutinho. Ma, you're playing against Coutinho and Mane every day. You yeah, playing against yeah. players better than that most nah, weeks. Nah, nah, nah. Nah. How good was Mane, by the way? His runs in. Oh my! He would have caused me a he massive was, yeah, problem. Yeah, nah, 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 same. He's, he's the one player that I that I played that I've, I've always thought I'm thankful I never oh, played against. He'd have, him. he'd have caused me nightmare. He would have been my worst nightmare. He was that he, run. He was a perfect. He was a perfect. Attacker, you know. Yeah. He had, he had everything. Yeah, the, the movement was unbelievable with him. Had, as an athlete, that was. Yeah. Prob- probably like in the end, similar to like Ronaldo, I would say. Yeah. Like, he had the jump. He could get up. He was yeah. fast. He could fin- not finishing. Probably wasn't the same, but he could finish yeah. both feet. He was just a threat at all times for yeah. everyone. Right. We should do a podcast every week on the right backs. I know. <laughs> Thank Brilliant. You. Amazing that. Thank you.